We've got a hip flexor strain with um, CJ Sanders. Uh, and we just had a surgically repaired um, spiral fracture uh, of uh, uh, Boykin's finger. Uh, he had surgery yesterday. We should get him back too, um, you know, when we get back for break. Um, he actually practiced with the spiral fracture and, uh, you know, was fine, but we wanted to get it fixed and stable. Um, so th the only one that's gonna be out uh, for a prolonged period of time will be CJ uh, with, the, with the hip flexor strain. And, and when you mean prolonged period of time, you're talking how long? Probably four months. Um, he's, I think he's three centimeters, which is, um, you know, you can PRP it. It's, 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 it's kind of in that gray area. They're still consulting as to, the, you know, whether that's a surgical procedure to reattach, similar to a Tory Hunter injury uh, that he had, if you guys recall, um, where, where it's either PRP'd or surgically repaired. We did not surgically repair. Um, and hunters, we PRP'd it. So it's kind of one of those, if it's three, four, five centimeters, as I'm told, and again, I'm giving you secondhand information here, that they're trying to decide whether it's a surgical repair, that's about four months. So we should get them back, you know, running full go late July and should be able to get them rounded into shape for, for camp in August. And is McKelty injured or? McKelty is no longer um, with the football program. I can't get into any more specifics other than that. I think Who that. Did you look at in the return game with CJ out that long? Uh, Fink would be back there. Um, really pleased with uh, his camp and you know what he's doing. I guess it's spring ball, it's not camp, but um, he's, uh, he's got really good speed and, and uh, certainly he would be one that, that would get an opportunity to, to, to get there. But you know, I think we're planning on getting CJ back, but um, he, he was really good last uh, camp, even as a true freshman um, in fielding punts in particular for us. Uh, the kickoff return game would be something that we would probably look at. Um, you know, Josh was back there. We'd probably look at, you know, a little bit of everybody. How was that get a little banged up today? He did. He did. I, I don't have a, a full uh, evaluation of him right now. Brian, I don't think this is Corey's first concussion. Is there any extra No, I think what we want to be is very careful with with Corey we, we don't get you know obviously we don't get to the point where we overreact or underreact we just you know when it when it comes to any kind of you know head injury we want to be on top of it and but you know I don't I don't know that there's ever a feeling that you know somebody's going to be disqualified um, because you know they've had a you know a second head injury um, you know, we'll go through the protocol. I think we have a great one. Dr. Lysler does a great job of working with our guys. So I don't think we're overly concerned other than we'll make sure that we do all the little things the right way. Brian, linebackers an area that you don't have a lot of guys. What have you seen so far from those guys? Anybody kind of standing out to you as far as uh, their testimony? Yeah, I think Niles has done a really, you know, terrific job of, of communicating and leading the defense. Um, you know, James is really solid, James Anawalu. Um, and, and, you know, I think we're getting, you know, obviously we're really thin. Asmar is, is going to be a good player for us, he's, but he's learning, right? Everything is new for him every day. You know, we were live today and there was some live contact drill work and we know he can run. It's just, you know, sorting out a lot of the things that he sees. And, and so all this experience is really, really good for him. Um, so it's just work in progress there. Um, I, I think probably the, the most um, important thing is, is the, the middle linebacker it looks really, really solid for us. Brian, how are the reps uh, being divvied up with the three quarterbacks uh, among the first team and is it the goal? No, I think I think that the equal reps will happen with Kaiser and Zaire, 
and um, Brandon would not get the same amount of reps as the first two, but um, you know he would get um, enough reps to develop and continue to, to work his craft and get better. And I'd say he has improved already, even, even with the work that he's gotten, which isn't as much as the first two guys. So I'm pleased with, with all, all three of the quarterbacks. Um, it, it's, you know, Malik is a little rusty in terms of um, just the management of game situations and live situations just getting us moving quickly. Deshaun's doing a very good job there, but um, we got to keep tightening him up mechanically. And then um, I think Brandon has got a much better uh, sense of the offense and a lot more confident in, in what he's doing. Do you anticipate making them live uh, for any periods during the spring though? And what would be the benefit? There'll, there'll be a chance. Well, you know, we run the quarterback. <laughs> You know, and they're they're an important part of our run game. So they'll be live at at some time. Um, I don't know if it's going to be the game yet. I really haven't decided there yet. They'd like to be live every time, um, but th there'll be a time when they 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 definitely will be live. Brian, with the situational stuff with the quarterbacks, does Deshaun have an advantage given that you already know where his baseline is with that, as opposed to maybe? It's not apparent that when we practice that there is a, um, a, a definite um, advantage there. Game, you know, game-like situations are hard to duplicate. We'd have to be in more of a two-minute offense and you know try to create those situations which we haven't done yet. I would say that you would probably get a better sense in, in like in the spring game whether there that all that work that he got um, put him at an advantage position if you will. Um, so when it's so controlled you don't see it quite as much in the practices that we have. So um, I think that we spend most of our time really working Deshaun on the mechanics and, and not necessarily, you know, um, the, the things that um, you guys had seen last year. So we'll, we'll get those opportunities later in the spring and, and my guess is that that's going to be uh, an advantage for him. With CJ out, does that put Tory more into the slot role or is somebody like Pinky? Fink's in there and we move Corey Holmes in there. Um, we wanted to see Corey Holmes get some more work, so we moved him in there and um, he, he was exclusively in there today. We got him a lot of work. Um, we want to keep Stefferson on the outside. It's, it's easier to manage the outside positions than the inside. The inside has so much more read routes and you got to work in and over coverages and sit down. It requires a lot more um, savviness, if you will. Um, so we want to utilize Hunter's speed um, and his matchup ability on the perimeter. So we'd like to keep him outside if we could. So we moved Holmes inside with Fink and those two guys handled the slot today. And we'd like to keep EQ and, and Hunter and Stefferson on the outside uh, as much as we can, if, if possible. I know you said you're rotating a lot of pieces of defensive back right now. Yep. But just in terms of safety in the first week, who have been the guys um, kind of with, working with the first and second team that you really wanted to get a good look at, you know, Redfield and Tranquil. Uh, but is he Sebastian, one of the freshmen? Devin Studd still. Studd. He's running with uh, our first group right now. He's been, he, he's been really good. Um, so we've been very pleased with, with what he's been doing um, and uh, very, very happy with the way he's picked up our defense. Um, excellent ball skills. Uh, Excellent retention. Um, he's he's been probably the guy that has has done you know the most back there. And then 
um, you know, Sean Crawford at the nickel has been outstanding. Um, you know, he's, he's looked really, really good. So those two guys have jumped out. Um, cornerback is a, is, a, is a battle. You know, there's a good battle going on out there. So, but I, I would say those two guys have, have really done a nice job. Not meant, you know, the other guys have done good things, but you asked me who has really caught my eye. It's been Stud Still and, and Crawford. And I know it's saved you also for the last couple of years. Kind of learning the defense has been maybe a little bit of a challenge. How is Stud Still? Have you been able to get a gauge of where he is as far as understanding the defense? And, and he wouldn't be that. out there working with the first group unless he had a natural ability to pick up what we're, we're sending him. And he's been able to pick it up as a mid-year enrollee uh, in spring ball. And um, he's making plays and getting lined up and getting guys in the right position. So um, we've been very pleased. First unit on D-line seems to be pretty set or pretty clear. What about the second unit? Is anybody kind of standing out there? And well, there's a lot of competition. I mean, there's, I mean, I think that that's, you know, that's where there's a lot of guys that we're using this time to really try to hone in on, you know, what that rotation looks like, you know. Um, you know, we're trying to get, you know, <laughs> Probably, you know, guys on the edge that, that, you know, we moved Jay Hayes out to, to the, the defensive end position. So, you know, Hayes and Blank and Chip are guys that are really looking at, you know, we're looking at Taylor. You know, he's so strong and physical. Can he play the three? Bonner, um, you know, Pete Mukwa. Um, John Mont Montillas is a strong physical guy. Um, you know, uh, Mike and Duke Treadway. All of those guys are getting lots of work. Matter of fact, I'm tailoring the practice such that you know, we're, we're really trying to make sure that we get through all of our individuals so we can get to that teamwork so our twos get a lot of work because we really, we really got to kind of sort it out. So, you know, we're only four or five practices into it, but they're getting a ton of work so we can really evaluate where we are with, you know, the next rotation. Brian, a couple more. With Thalen Hayes not being able to have contact, are you able to evaluate him well enough where you know what he might be able to give you in the fall and where he might fit in? Um, honestly, no. I think it's what we hope that he can give us. Um, you know, all, all of his measurables in terms of, you know, the individual work that we do with him without you know, contact has been really good. How he bends, how he retains information, how he, you know, competes. Um, you know, it, it's hard to say. We know that that's going to translate. Um, we feel really confident, but, but we're still in that hoping stage that it's, it's going to come out the way we think it is. And, and was that still, with such a young player and with a complex defense, I mean, do you feel like this is sustainable, or do you think he's just kind of surged? Or no, nah, it's just a natural player. Yeah, it comes easy to him. He's just a natural player that has played safety and just flows easily to him. It's not hard to him. Um, he's had no setbacks um, in terms of the learning curve. He had one mistake today, um, but. Uh, it's, it really comes easy to him. Yep. It seems like there's a lot of excitement on campus with both basketball teams and, and, and recruiting this week. Uh, a little momentum just for the, for the campus and for your program? Yeah, I think there is. I mean, you know, certainly, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, we're coming off of, a, a, you know, a, a, a solid season and there's good momentum in the recruiting uh, for us. and. You know, Notre Dame is out there relative to basketball on TV and, you know, our hockey's playing in the playoffs. Our lacrosse team is on playing, you know, nationally televised games. So our athletic department and, and the success that all of our teams are, are having, you know, we feed off of it. All of us feed off of it. And, you know, you try to set the table, you know, uh, in the fall and then, you know, you, you build off of that. You know, and all, all the sports are striving for the same thing. But, you know, we're having a great year, and, and obviously, 
you know, for us now we're in that recruiting cycle and um, it, it's it's uh, build up some pretty good energy. No, no, he's 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 working at the free safety position. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, good question. So, really, the way this thing is coming together, it's McGovern was was doing well. We were pleased with McGovern. So you got McGovern. You've got Tristan Hodge. You've got Alex Bars, and you got Hunter Biven. So th those four guys are kind of battling out the right side. The left side's pretty much set over there, as you can imagine, with um, Q, uh, Quentin Nelson, and, and McGlinchey, and, and Sam Solid at center. So it's really those four guys and, and trying to figure out what the best you know, grouping is, and, and they're all competing, they're all doing good things, but that's pretty much what we got going right now. I don't know if McGovern, he was a guy that you had to high on when you signed him, and then it's yeah. on as a freshman, but he's battled some injuries. Have you been able to kind of get some of that quickness and strength back? He yes, up. yeah, we, we feel like, yes, his, his strength numbers are good. He's back into 22, 23. At, look, our, our, our line for where we need the strength numbers, you know, 600 on the squat, you know, two, 22, 23, 24 on the bench, that's kind of like that demarcation line. He's at that. He moves well, um, he's athletic, he's a 26 vertical, which is really good. So he's got all the numbers. It's exactly what you said. It was some of the things physically that, that kept him off the field. He's been staying away other than this, this, this small setback that we're having right now. So um, he's a good athlete. So if we can keep him on the field, he's, he's got a fighting chance. And with Bars, you said those four guys are kind of Fighting for two spots. Is yeah. Mars kind of still sort of that swing guy, or are you trying to focus? We're we're, we're trying we're trying to keep him out at the right tackle position with with Hunter, and and that battle is there. And then inside Hodge, Tristan Hodge, and, and McGovern at the right guard position. So, but as you can tell, we have a little flexibility with bars, but. Other than that, that's that's it in terms of the flexibility of position. Other than, you know, Tristan can certainly go in and play the center position too. Good. Fred, yeah, one more. Fred, he's coming along very well. Yeah, he's playing a lot for us. Um, made some nice one-on-one -on -one tackles today, uh, live live tackling. So he's involved in live tackling drills and in our live 11-on-11 11 11 situation where there was some question as to whether he would be allowed to do that. Uh, that was answered today, and um, I think he answered it um, by he did not come off the field when we went live. So he kind of forced the issue, so he looks good. All right, thanks.